Hey Liron here, I'm gonna film this one real quick for you. I want you to see everything I'm doing. My face doesn't matter as much this time. Um, I was asked a rather beginner question of how do I produce enough paint? So a, a very kind of beginner, but still something that is constantly, you'll meet this no matter what you paint. So let me show you. For example, what most people want is the ability to be able to mix very rich, strong paint. Now, that's one aspect of it. How can I get my paint to be strong and rich and dark enough? Now, the other side of it is how do I mix a large enough quantity? So how can I bring in enough paint to create a large workable area that I can then use to paint a relatively, let's say, large wash? right because you'll need to mix in advance as much as possible very often now the larger you paint the more important it becomes right so you see right now i have a relatively smooth flow kind of a nice even uh, transitions the reason for that is because i have mixed um, a lot of paint in advance really fast now here's my answer first off um, it does have to do with water. No matter how you look at it, you do need enough water. So my brush now is really, really wet. And then I'm gonna work my way with the brush through the well and to make it also wet enough so that I can work with it. Now, some people, myself included, like to spray a bit of water on the palette before you even begin, just to get everything wet. Now, here's the reality of it. Some paints are just harder naturally Physically, they're harder than others. They take longer to reawaken. Uh, my cobalt turquoise here is an example of that. It, uh, it's it like it, it's very gluey, kind of. It's hard to explain, but it almost works like glue. So let's say I even remove what I have here and let's try and start fresh, just with this color. Uh, so what you'll see is it looks very weak. Now compare that to just a few touches of my thalo blue. Look at what I get. But if I use my cobalt turquoise here uh, by Rosa Gallery watercolors you see it takes a while now here's the thing it is okay if it takes a while that is perfectly fine it can take a while there's no problem with that so right now what i'll get is um not that strong of paint right but the more i bring in it will go darker now one thing to realize is it's quite light naturally so no matter how much paint i'm going to bring it'll stay light but if we talk about quantity you dip back into the water well, you bring in more water, you bring in more of the paint, you bring in more water, more paint, until you have enough. Now, what many people do as a mistake is they're just a little timid with how they bring the paint from the well. So let's say I'm working very timidly and I barely get enough paint to work with. You really need to get in there and dig sometimes. The larger you paint, the more important it is gonna be that you dig into the well make sure that you bring in you almost physically drag the paint out from there and that way you can mix enough so that you don't have to constantly remix because even if you have to let's say now i have to remix so i'll bring in more water and more paint and already by the time i'm doing this this edge begins to dry these edges begin to dry and by the time i revisit them if this is too watery or i kind of messed up it's not the end of the world you have to understand, but you will start getting unevenness in backgrounds. It's not the end of the world, it's okay. I'm a big fan of whatever the edge is gonna be like. It's gonna be like, like look at this, this is almost fully dry. I don't really care, I'm gonna go over it and you'll get lovely watercolor effects, you know, that's fine. You'll reawaken the edge a bit and it's gonna be okay. You'll get some cauliflowers, but who cares? I mean, at the, in the grand scheme of things, no one really will notice, but the thing is sometimes you really have to dig into the well. Now, if we look at a color that is inherently very kind of lame and meh and light, like this quinacridone rose here naturally, well, you know what? I'm not sure that's a hard paint. Um, let's see what we have here. I don't even, I have no clue what colors are hidden here. Uh, I think one of them is kind of a burnt umber thing and that's gonna be a hard color to mix. So let's say I'm gonna clean this up and let's see how much effort it's going to take for us to make a strong mix using this paint so you see this is uh, burnt umber if i'm not mistaken buried under some blue um, and yes you can spray it so that it starts reawakening a bit more but you see some colors are just the their work it's gonna take work and it's gonna take multiple glazes usually it's the earthy colors and even if the color itself is it appears dark on the palette not always it's gonna mix very easily 
a dark value. That's just how it is. But once it starts reawakening, the water seeps into it, you can start producing um, a stronger color with it, okay? Um, but the thing is, sometimes it just takes a bit of persistence. More water, more water on the well directly, and then just dragging the paint out from the well. Don't, I won't be concerned with my brush and, you know, ruining it or anything like that. Uh, if you want, you can use cheaper brushes just to make sure it's okay for you to destroy them as you mix. I personally like to use my materials as freely as I can. Otherwise, I'm just not going to get the results I want. So to me, it's really important to be able to, you know, put some weight behind my brushes. And if they're destroyed, so be it. I'll get new ones. Okay. Uh, but just, you know, the big ugly mess here. That is fine. So that's the, the thing. Sometimes it's going to take a little work. Some colors are more hard on the palette once they dry naturally. Some colors are so hard, like pens that you pre-purchase, that I would just tell you, forget about it, get a tube and use freshly squeezed paint. So when you squeeze it out of the brush, I have a bunch of tubes here in this bag. The moment you squeeze them out from outside the, the, the tube, they're going to be the softest and easiest to work with. Thalo Blue is kind of always like that. Uh, Daniel Smith's or M. Graham's. M. Graham's, generally speaking, are just easier to work with. But that's it. That's a very beginner question. Don't be scared to ask these questions. I'm happy to do videos on them. I think it's important to revisit the basics. It all comes down to figuring it out. Honestly, no one really taught me that. I just figured it out. Some colors just take more work and I shouldn't be afraid to really dig into the well and bring out the, the strength, the full strength of the color if I want to. Uh, I don't remember if this is undersea green anymore, but undersea green is kind of similar. It's a little hard to darken and mix a large quantity of. You just do it. You take your time, you bring in more paint, bring in more, more paint, more water, more paint until you have enough. It could take you double the time it took me, depending on the brand of color you use, the type of pigment. That's okay. You take your time and you will get it. I hope that was helpful. I will see you in the next video. Don't forget, if you do uh, want to learn how to paint with complete freedom, um, have the full joy of watercolor, check out a frustration for your watercolor course. If you're more into realism, check out a watercolor realism course. Check out my book, new book, Painting a Masterpiece with the 100 Cards Challenge. I hope you'll give these a look. And I do want to thank everyone who supports me over on Patreon. I almost forgot. Uh, you make it possible for me to share tons of free content with everyone. So thank you so, so much from me and from anyone else who's watching the videos. And I will talk to you again soon. Take care.